Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to combine multiple CSV files with Power Query. Now CSV files are comma separated value files. Now they're usually text files and the first row are usually the field headers and any subsequent rows or rows afterwards are the values separated by commas. Oh, the heading is also separated by commas. So let me kind of go through an overview of what we're trying to do and give some considerations of why we want to use Power Query to do it. So let's say, for example, in a folder, like on a desktop, we have several CSV files. Uh, this is a CSV file. Uh, this is just dummy data I mocked up. Maybe this is European sales. Uh, the other one is North America sales. Th this third file here, this third CSV file is uh, South American sales. An example of what the file would look like internally is, let's say, for example, if we opened up the file in Excel, uh, we would have uh, the first row would be the header fields, item sales, region, and any subsequent rows are the values themselves. So row two would be item, and then the sales is 85, and the region is all going to be Europe, since this is a European, uh, this is European data. Now, if we opened up in Notepad, you'll see that this CSV file has the same kind of headers, but we don't have the structure of the grid lines. Basically, everything is separated by uh, commas for each record. So the first row is going to be our item sales region and subsequent rows will be the value or the records themselves separated by commas. Now what we want to do is we want to combine all these files into one big file. So for example we would take uh, our Europe, North America, South America files. We all want to have it in basically one file and we just have one field for the description headers and all the records are in their particular rows. So we have Europe here, North America, South America. Now this may be trivial or this might not take too much work of copying and pasting if we just have a limited number of records. In this example I have 10 records for Europe, 10 records for North America, and 10 records for South America. And the reason why I kind of want to cover why we want to use Power Query is these considerations. Let's say we have a large record set. Instead of having 10 for each CSV file, we have a hundred, thousands, or maybe millions of rows. And we want to don't really want to go through copying and pasting. Uh, if you tried to copy paste millions of rows of records uh, from Excel, you're going to have a big issue with that. Now, another thing to consider is if this is a recurring task, if this is something that you have to do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly. Now, there's got to be a way to uh, almost automate that. And using Power Query in Excel, we can basically mitigate these two considerations. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this. So here I am in Excel. So what I need to do is I need to have Power Query enabled. Now Power Query is an add-on that we can download from the Microsoft.com site. And you can just go ahead and do a Google search for download uh, Power Query. Now I think Power Query was first uh, introduced in Excel 2010. Right now I'm running Excel 2013. But if you're running Excel 2010, you can download uh, Power Query for that. And anything Excel 2010 and above, you can probably run Power Query. You just need to go ahead and add that in there. Now after you download it, you have to add the, um, you have to enable it. And basically the way you enable it is an add-on. So what you would do is you would go under uh, File, and under File we would go to uh, op So the Excel Options Windows opens, and we want to go to Add-ins, and under Add-ins we're going to add it in as a uh, COM add-in. So you may notice that I've already got it here uh, because it's, it's enabled, but if it's not enabled, after you download it and install it, you have to go ahead and enable it. And so under COM add-ins, you click and it'll come up with the comms add-ins windows. Uh, you should probably go ahead and enable it. Check off, check that box off and click OK. I've already done that, so uh, Power Query is already enabled. So that's how you would uh, enable it in uh, Excel if you don't already have it enabled. Now once that's done, what we need to do is go into Power Query and then under the Get External Data, go to From File and one of the parameters that I that we set up is having all the CSV files within the folder. So what I'm trying to show here is once we have all the files within the folder, any subsequent updates where we have reoccurring updates, we can just man basically move that file into this folder and update uh, this particular file and it will refresh it. So let me go ahead and first show how we can combine the data and later on I'll show an example of how we can add new data in there, a new file in there and refresh it. So all my files are in a folder. Let me go ahead and search for my folder. Click on this. 
So I'm going to go ahead and browse for my folder. So I have to browse for my folder. This is um, my sales region folder, which my three files are in. So the three files that I had shown earlier where we had Europe, North America, and South America. I'm going to go ahead and click OK and click OK here. And now the Excel Power Query is going to bring in those files. Now, it didn't look like it brought in the files, but it really did. It brought in the attributes of those files. So it brought in the Europe file, the North America file, and the South American file. And these extensions indicate that it's a comma separated value. So we don't really need the attributes. So what we're really looking for is we're looking to download the content. So, so if we click on this uh, double downward arrows, what it's going to do is it's going to bring in the contents of each of these files. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And you now you notice that there's these steps that are going through, that Power Query is going through to bring the contents of the file in. It's combining the binaries, importing the CSV file, changing the types. So you'll notice now we just have to do a little bit of a transformation, a little bit of cleanup here. You'll notice that the columns, the headings aren't correct. What I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, bring these header fields up and make them my column headings. And what I can do is under the Home tab here, under Transform, we're going to use the first row as headers. Once I click on that, you'll notice those headers got promoted. The th other thing that we need to consider is once it brought in the contents from all the files, it also brought in the header fields from each one. So you notice down here at the bottom, we have the header fields for North America. So we want to go ahead and get rid of that. I'm going to go, you can select any one of these. I'm going to go ahead and select sales because it's a number and not text. So I can just go ahead and spot that text there. So, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and deselect sales though, because I don't want uh, anything, any row that has sales in there. So I want to get rid of that whole row for those two instances. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the drop down. Uh, let me go ahead and move this window up a little bit. Let me go ahead and find sales and uncheck that. Click OK. And now you notice that anything, any row that has sales is gone. So the header fields here is gone. The header fields from uh, South America are gone. So that's fine. And so you notice that this is filtered. And the steps that I applied, the last one where I did the filtering, filtered out sales, it also applied it here. So when I add in a new file, it's going to go through all these steps for new files that I input there. So this is going to be happening when I bring in a new file, a new CSV file. It's going to go through these same steps and update the table. So let me go ahead and go to the back to the Home tab here, and I'm going to close and load. And what it's going to do is it's going to close it and load it as a new table in Excel. So it's going to go through that computation work and go ahead and load a table here. So now you notice that I have my item sales region, I have everything for Europe here, everything for North America there. Let me go ahead and scroll down. Everything for South America here. And what I can do is I can, if I wanted to do some analysis, I can build a pivot table off of this. So this is a table. I'll go ahead and go insert, click insert pivot table. And I'm just going to put the pivot table here in uh, the cell here, maybe the cell here. And go ahead and click OK. And now I'm just going to add some of the uh, information here. Let me go ahead and move this down a little bit. Now I'm going to add region here. And whoops, let me go ahead and add region here to the rows and sales. I'm just going to do a count because you'll notice it'll just be easier to show this as an example. There's 10 sales here, right? So because because there's 10 items here. And the same for uh, North America. There's 10 here. And if I go down, whoop, let me go ahead and close this workbook query. If I go ahead and scroll down you'll see that there is uh, 10 for South America right here. All right. So as I mentioned before, this may not be so difficult to do if we had uh, 10 records for each uh, file. But if we had hundreds or thousands or even millions of records, this would be a very difficult process. And having Power Query uh, do it for us makes it a lot easier. Now, if we also wanted to do that in addition to updating it, Power Query makes it really easy. So what we can do here, let me go into my Windows Explorer and show you how easy it is. So here I am in my folder. Uh, let me go into the sales region. This is where I had my different CSV files. Go ahead and then go ahead and go back. Um, now let's say, for example, I'm adding files uh, every month. Maybe this was not a regional file, but maybe this was something that was done every every week or every month. And maybe this would be month one, month two. If we wanted to update it, all I need to do is go ahead and move a file that has the same format. I'll just go ahead and copy it in there or just move it in there. Now you notice that that file is there with my other files. 
All I have to do is, once that file is moved in there and it's in the same format, I can just go back into Excel and refresh it. So let me go back into Excel. So now I'm back in Excel and I just have my Europe, Europe, my Europe data, my North American data, and my South American data. So what I can do is I can go ahead and click in the table, right click, and click refresh. And once I click refresh, you notice now the Asia data has been pulled in. Now if I go back into the query, so let me go ahead and find my query editor. Let me go ahead and click on edit query here. Now you notice that in the query editor it shows that the Asia content was pulled in all 10 uh, records for that. And it basically applied all these steps to that as it pulled it in. And of course it also pulled it into the table. Now let me go ahead and close this. Uh, for the pivot table, basically that's a different part of uh, Excel. So what we need to do is refresh that too. So I can just go ahead and click in the pivot table, right click and go ahead and uh, select refresh. And now you see that Asia, the Asia content has showed. Through. So that's basically a pretty nifty process when you think about it because what we did was we pulled in a data into the into Excel and also had it clean it up automatically. Once, it, once we set it up where it cleaned it up initially, we just have to pull it into the same folder and it cleaned it up automatically. All we need to do is refresh the table. And if we're doing analysis on the pivot table, refresh the pivot table. So as I mentioned before, this is a really nice capability when you think about it. Because if you're trying to combine uh, files that are large and also doing it on a recurring basis, Power Query in Excel really provides a great solution. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.